Hey guys, welcome back to another week of I have a lot to do this week. I feel like I'm being maybe a little bit overly ambitious. My theme for this week was going to be to finally repot all of the large plants in the house that need to be repotted. Um, the ones that I can think of on the top of my head. Alocasia Frydeck, El Guapo, Florida Beauty, uh, I've got this Esmeralda. Like there are maybe four or five big plants that need a repot, whether it be they're just root bound or they just need to be chopped, they're just getting too big. But as you guys know now, I am pregnant and dealing with pregnancy symptoms, primarily the headaches that have been sort of like the bane of my existence in the second trimester. So I'm having one today. I usually get it around the same time and um, this is around the time that I usually lay down, but I want to get as much done this week as possible. So um, I'm not gonna be doing all of the big repots like in one day. I'm gonna space it out throughout the week. And on top of that, we've gotta do watering. I need to fertilize. Um, I need to prep some plant for the live sale at North Shore on Friday. So we're gonna go into the tent, go into the plant room, figure out who can be chopped, who can be repotted and I don't know, sent off. I just, I feel like along with the purging that I've been doing in the last few months, I feel like I can still afford to do a little bit more. Um, my goal this week is to hopefully get rid of three full plants. Don't ask me. Who that's gonna be, I don't know. All I know is that I still, I just have this feeling that there are still too many plants in my collection, even though I have purged so many of them. And then I will end the week over at North Shore, give you a little sneak peek into the live sale, some of the chores that we do that day before the sale, and that'll be it. So anywho, let me show you who is on the roster today in terms of a repot. If you watched my glow ups and glow downs video that went up either a week ago or two weeks ago, you will recognize this big guy. So this is my Philodendron El Guapo and it needs to be repotted because it is now climbing out of this pot and it just needs something bigger. It's not that the root system is super massive because you can see it's not even really taking over this whole thing, but I don't really want to chop a lot because I do like the growth on it thus far. I don't really want to stunt it too much, but I just want to get it into a bigger climbing, climbing, bigger crawling pot to support the size of the plant and to allow it to keep crawling. My hope is that once this gets heavier, It'll push the stem down and it'll continue to crawl. So I can finally use, by the way, it's wet because I just gave it a shower. I wanted to wash away any of the EFN on it before um, I got in and started doing repots because it's so sticky. So yeah, I want to upsize the pot, finally use one of those big crawling pots that my mom got me from Target. And on top of that, I'm doing a pond to soil conversion because I really don't want to use that much pond in such a huge vessel like the vessel that it's going in is maybe like three times the size of this and that will be basically all of my pond so i'm i'm not feeling super terrible about the transition am i a bit nervous yes but i think it's gonna be okay so all we're doing today i think all i have the capacity for is i want to give it a good wipe down do a spider mite prevention with the spray chop it a little bit, chop the little tail off, repot it, and and then I'm gonna call it a day. And then we will continue on tomorrow. So I'm going to pack up here and then I will meet you in the plant room. I think before I start, I need to mix more soil because the vessel is seriously massive. Okay, so I have a few options. A few options here, sorry for the weird angle. This is one of the, um, ones that I got from Target. It is about the same size as the pot that's in the pot that it's in now, so that's not going to work. I have the next size up, which is this one that I got from Dollarama. It's actually a really really great size. I just don't know if I like this sort of grenade style planter on my shelf. Um, the one that I really wanted to get it into was this one. 
but it is literally like four times the size of the pot it's currently in the only thing is is i really don't have another plant in my collection that i can see ever living in this and so i almost feel like maybe i just pot it in here now do the crazy upsize method that i've been doing for my anthurium and then maybe it'll be good in here for like another year or so until it like outgrows this pot so I am leaning towards this, but if I find that it's a bit of an overkill, then this will be my second option. But before I do anything and even bring the plant in here, I need to mix more soil. I think that I need to mix a batch that's like gonna fill up this container instead. It feels a little bit more appropriate. But oh my gosh, this is gonna eat into all of my amendments. I'm gonna put on a mask. I have been not masking on camera, but now that um, I'm pregnant, I've really been trying to be better about masking all the time. Soil is mixed and now it is time to put together my little spider mite solution. Oh my gosh, okay, my head is pounding, you guys. And I know that um, they say Tylenol is safe in pregnancy, but I have been so paranoid to take anything. The only thing I have taken so far in terms of medication are um, my nausea meds and that's because if i don't i am just going to continue to lose weight and it's the only thing that has been helping me eat and not throw up um okay so i have alcohol i think this is a hundred percent i think this might be 75 percent in this bottle that i have i prefer to use the hundred but i also don't want to waste perfectly good alcohol this is my spray bottle that I'm using. This is all um, water, mostly water. There's a little bit of like my leftover mix in here, but it was like the tiniest bit. Like I couldn't even spray anymore. So this much water, you can see there's still quite a bit left up here. Then I'm gonna take my alcohol and I'm probably gonna do around like six or seven dropper full. So I'm getting about four milliliters each time. So maybe like, what, six times four, <laughs> 24, <laughs> 24 milliliters, maybe a little, I think I'll do a little bit more. 
I've even done the um, spray at 100%, no dilution for like active uh, spider mites. But since this is just for preventative reasons, I don't want to go too hard. And then of course I'm adding the Dr. Woods tea tree and peppermint soap. And I'm not even joking you guys when I say I have no measurements. I literally just put like a little squish of each. And then I just give it a little swirl. And this has been my absolute go-to for treating spider mites. I will say spider mite knockout from Dr. Doom has also been great, but I do think that using this regularly has been the reason why I've been able to get rid of as many spider mites as I have. Okay, so I've got one leaf back here that just refuses to drop. Like there's been one, two, three, four, five other leaves that came after it that already fell off. And for some reason, this one just doesn't want to go. I mean, it's starting to turn yellow now, but um, yeah, it's all the way in the back. And I do want to chop off a tiny bit of this stem. Um, and all I'm really going to be doing is wiping the leaves down. So I think I'm going to take this to the side because otherwise you won't be able to see anything and I won't be able to see you. Oh my gosh, the back is still so sticky. I will say that's one thing about philodendron that I don't enjoy is the extra floral nectaries. Some of them just get so overwhelmingly bad that um, it either like takes over the whole leaf in terms of cosmetic damage or just like makes it not fun at all to have to do things like this. Cause some of you guys already know I'm like, I'm a texture person and when my hands are sticky, oh, it gives me goosebumps, it gives me goosies. Um, I do find that this, I guess, mutation of the SP Columbia or, S or El Guapo or whatever, it's a little bit harder to treat for spider mites because the veins are so much tighter and you can really, really miss a lot in here. So sometimes I even like to go in with a brush, not abrasively and just like kind of like make sure I get in between the cracks, but I don't see any spider mites on this. So I'm not going to be going that far today, but I think definitely once spring gets closer I will be a little bit more invasive in my treatments. Anyway, it's so nice now to be able to film a week of and have you guys like know what's going on because I can't even tell you how hard it has been to freaking film. How many week ofs have I done now where I've had to keep it a secret? September, October, November, three months. I'm not gonna be spraying this leaf because it's still kind of brand new. Like it hasn't fully hardened yet. And the last time I sprayed this mixture on an emergent leaf, it did this. Can you see? Oh, down here. Um, it kind of like burned through the leaf. So definitely don't wanna do that again. I really should do the backs of the leaves, but I'm feeling kind of lazy right now. What I could also do is after the repot, literally just put it back in the shower and just douse it with this spray. Okay, that's gonna be, that's good for me. That's good enough for me. Standards are low today. First things first are gonna be to get it out of here. I already know during this whole repot process, I'm gonna hit the mic, I'm gonna cover the camera. It's gonna be a hot mess, you guys. Into here. I'm sorry if you guys can't see, I can't really see anything either. What I can also do is honestly just keep the root ball intact and just plop it into the new vessel, but I'll have to see what the roots look like. If they look ugly, then I'll wanna trim some roots off, but if it looks okay, I might not do a full untangle. I just need to somehow get it out of here without breaking everything I actually wow this thing is actually so much more root bound in here than I thought I want to flip it over but this bowl isn't big enough 
Oh my lanta. Okay, okay. I don't know why I even bothered doing my nails. It's all gonna come off right now. I just did them yesterday. Oh well. I'm gonna have to redo them before Christmas anyway. I'm thinking red since I'm a little bit more festive this year. Whoa, 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 forgot about this little thing. Lots of roots, oh my gosh. That um, was unexpected. I really thought all of the roots were just at the bottom. I probably should have used a bigger bowl. I'm like, do I even want to untangle this is the question. Okay, everybody cooperate. <laughs> it's been a while since I've repotted a plant this big and leafy. All right, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out where I'm chopping. So let me bring you a tiny bit closer. I don't know how much of this stem I wanna chop off because I would like to keep as many roots as possible. Uh, especially since it's going into such a large vessel, but I do think that I can afford to chop off some of this little tail here. And I'm almost thinking maybe around right here because there's a pretty solid root system here on the right side and a lot of it kind of um, stops here in the middle. So I think that would be a good separation point. I just don't want to... I wanna make sure any roots that belong to these nodes are not removed. So I think I will have to untangle this, unfortunately. So I don't know if you guys would have noticed or saw, but when I was mixing soil, I mixed in this batch of pond and that is a batch of pond that I've set aside from repot similar to this where there's a lot of fine secondary roots like this that have come off. And so as much as I try and clean it out, it's always like just very rooty and there's a lot of debris in there. So I don't really like to use those for new pond plants even after I sterilize it. So I just mix it in, like I sterilize it and then I mix it into my soil. So I think I am gonna chop right here. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like a good place here for me to chop. So I'm gonna just do it right here on this node. And then I can propagate this. Hopefully something comes out of it. And then I still have like a really good root system back here. And I actually feel these roots look pretty okay. I don't think I need to do a ton of root trimming. Like I do see some old roots, but I almost feel like it'll be fine in in the new vessel if I just keep it. I don't really wanna prod too much. Maybe I'll just remove the ones that are like very obviously dead. I'm gonna fill this with LECA probably up to about right here. And that's gonna be all of my LECA supply, which kind of sucks. Here's where we are with the LECA. You can kind of see it's about a quarter of the, the pot. Do you need to go higher or do I need to go higher? I can't tell. Maybe I just need to move back. Okay, okay. All right, so I'm gonna need the soil right where I can reach it. I do wanna inoculate it. So let's lift you up. Please don't spill. I'm gonna put it all the way at the back. And I'm so sorry you can't see anything. You guys, the worst repot in the history of repots. Oh, I forgot to put down my layer of soil. Crap, I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, this is heavy. Maybe it would be better if you were in the back here, but there's no space for you back here, I promise. Never thought of filming sideways, but here we are. So I'm using billions today to inoculate the roots. 
just saw a freaking fungus gnat. Disgusting. I want to get this part of the stem as close to the soil as possible, but I just think it's going to naturally fall that way. It's going to look kind of crazy for a little bit because like all the stems are hitting the size of the pot, but at least it'll keep it standing upright, you know? Okay, I think I need a bigger scooper. <laughs> this thing is pathetic. We're gonna go with my industrial size one. I got this, I got this from the dollar store. It's like the perfect size for big repots. Anyway, how are you guys doing? How's everyone, how's everyone hanging this December? I'm like, obviously holding on for dear life but i feel like i've had a pretty pretty good year um crazy year freak like actually this year was kind of insane i thought by now i'd be able to speak on it like what this crazy freaking court case thing is about but unfortunately things are not going great so i still can't talk about it but you know, hanging in there, definitely hanging in there. I don't know if I should like already angle it down or if I should keep it up the way it has been. And then maybe it'll just like fall on its own. I can't make decisions lately. It's very difficult for me. I don't even know if this is gonna be enough soil. That is crazy because this is like the biggest batch of soil ever. All right, we're in, y'all. I am confident, I am actually very confident that this is gonna find the soil. We're so close already. The stem is so close to the surface of the soil, it can almost taste it. The tail is sticking up a little bit in the back, but I'm actually not worried about that because the roots are in the soil and at least the cut part now can callus. It's so funny, it's just like the little bittiest tail that's sticking out because it's kind of going like this. Anywho, wow, I used all this soil. I mean, I may as well just use the whole thing, but I'm gonna try and pile it pretty high so that these um, roots that are poking out of the stem can find it. And hopefully we can start to have a crawling plant again instead of climbing. Now here's the thing, is this pot is gonna be way, way, way too big for where it was on the shelf, which kind of sucks. So I might have to find a new spot for it. But it, it looked so good where it was. I just knew that, you know, there was gonna come a time where it wasn't gonna fit anymore. So that kind of sucks. And that's like another reason why I just, I chop plants because I just need them to fit in a certain spot. And when they get too big, it's like, it becomes impossible to place them anywhere really that makes sense. Okay, so that is in. Let me try and show you what we have here. I know that that was like the worst, worst angled repot or worst repot in general. If there's an award for that on YouTube, please nominate me. I'd be so, it's so heavy. It's so heavy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's in. It looks crazy because it's all like super low now but I, I think that it'll find i think the leaves will eventually find its way up maybe they'll go a little bit higher hopefully the roots go into the soil and we have a plant that is <laughs> looking somewhat normal the thing is i wish because looking at this now look at how much of this pot is unoccupied with leaves this is girl girl measurements this much but if I chopped any more of the roots off, I would have had the teeniest root system to sustain this plant. So my guess is we're probably going to have one, two, three, four, maybe five plant, five leaves max until it hits the edge of the pot, <laughs> which sucks. But the good thing is, is once it gets to that point, if I can get a lot of roots up at the front, I can chop off 
half of it, we can go back into the same pot size. I'm not ever really going to worry about not having a pot big enough for this plant. There's a part of me that thinks it's going to be able to live in here indefinitely as long as it keeps getting chopped back. So I guess right now my main concern is the pond to soil transfer. I am going to water it, but not as deeply as I normally would. The pond is typically very wet. The pot that it was in was pretty shallow, so I don't want the roots to get super dehydrated, but I also don't want it sitting in muddy water, muddy soil. So that's the plan. And now I'm done. So um, yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for today. Well, also in general, I think like three hours is what I aim for for a week of. My last week of did like freakishly well. I think it's already over 20,000 views and it was posted like, how many weeks ago now? Four weeks ago, it's crazy. But I, I don't think I have it in me to do a three hour one this month. So I'm gonna aim for like two, two-ish hours if I can. So each day is gonna be a little bit shorter, but I'll still try and give you guys a good mix of everything and maybe even try to incorporate a little repot and chat Q&A. I feel like the week ofs are gonna be a good way for me to get some of these random questions answered um, that I don't answer in like a dedicated Q&A. Um, and I also think while I'm laying in bed, waiting for this headache to go away, I'm gonna go through my YouTube comments and start compiling some questions that I get that I feel like maybe other people might have. Tomorrow, I am hoping to do my Florida beauty, but there's a new leaf on the way, which kind of sucks. So I'm kind of like hesitant to chop it. My billy also needs to be repotted. I am contemplating getting rid of one of the billies because I put both of them together like I put both vessels together and it is, it's too much. It's too much billy. I didn't think that that was possible, but it's just too much billy. So I think I might have to get rid of one. But anywho, wow, well, I'm blabbing. That's gonna wrap it for today. I'll see you in a bit. Hey guys, happy Thursday. Obviously I'm in the car and it's Thursday. So Tuesday night after I stopped filming, I had like the worst nausea attack plus migraine and um spent all tuesday night crying to my husband about how freaking miserable i was um so i had to take like a double dose of my nausea meds which means wednesday i just slept all day like it makes me so drowsy just one pill so two pills it's like i've taken a benadryl or something so obviously i couldn't film yesterday but i'm feeling somewhat okay today and i thought while i'm feeling well i should go out and grab a new vessel because today oh, is this truck really not gonna wait for me okay it is what it is what was i saying get back get back oh 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 yeah so Today I want to repot, I think I want to try and repot two plants if I have it in me. Um, I want to do my Philodendron Glorious. Uh, that one has reached the edge of its pot, so I want to get it into a crawling pot. And then my fry deck is the one that I need a vessel for. So it's actually in a pretty large vessel right now, but I find that my alocasia actually do better in deeper pots rather than wider pots. So I'm gonna try and find one that is large and deep. That's what she said. And hopefully I can find something cause the last time I went to this thrift store, they didn't have anything like it, but I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what I can find. So then, um, yeah, I'll go home. We will repot some plants. And then, since I have to go to uh, North Shore Tropicals tomorrow for the live sale, I need to prep all the plants that I'm selling as well. So we gotta figure out who's gonna go. Anyway, yeah, I don't really want to be filming and driving because it's raining and I don't drive well <laughs> when it's raining. So uh, yeah, I'll see you at the thrift store. I know I said I was gonna see you at the thrift store, but that was a mega, mega bust. They had nothing. They had like small glass vessels, but like there were no large ones at all. Usually 
there's at least a few that I can choose from and some like oftentimes it's like too big but they just didn't have any and the whole store was just Christmas stuff so uh yeah I'm not gonna be repotting my uh fry deck today because I don't want to force it I really want to make sure that I can find the right vessel uh size I do have two vessel sizes that are perfect but um I don't I just don't want to have to like remove a plant just for the fry deck. So anywho, we're going to put that off. And for now, I am just going to dig through my tent and figure out who I can sell. I don't even know where, I don't know where to begin. Whoa, where did this new leaf come from? What the heckers? I have a crystal silver special, crystal item silver special that I could sell, but it doesn't really look like much right now. Um, I do have another one and this new leaf was so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be and it like hit the bottom of the shelf. I like the, the leaf was so tiny when it came out that I was like, oh, it's gonna be like another miniature guy, but nope, it was actually quite large. So I do want to, I think I want to hold on to that one and then I'll just sell this little guy for super cheap just because I just need space. I just don't really want to have to take care of all of these right now. My little billy prop only formed half of its leaf and it's green. So that kind of sucks. This was a prop from the main plant and it's just fully green. So that's a bummeroni. I do have a fry deck in here for sure, but the variation isn't that great. Although the new leaf on it does look a bit more promising than the ones that came before it just don't know i mean yeah i guess i'll sell it they're not really going for that much anymore so i'd rather just get rid of it because i can't remember if i mentioned it in this video but my credit card bill <laughs> this month was insane it was crazy christmas really messed me up so yeah i gotta like make some money if i can all of these ethereum are growing and they're like hitting each other oh my gosh the fungus gnats you guys i have another fried egg back here that is still fully white so we can't do anything with that unfortunately oh i found out recently and i i can't believe that i didn't um put two and two together sooner but i thought my heterophila dragon's breath my alocasia hit Alocasia heterophila dragon's breath was a dragon's breath, but it's actually not. It's a chorus, chorason, chorason. Um, so I do have a prop of that. I actually have two in here that I could sell, but I don't know if it's too little. Like honestly, I could probably get like five bucks for this. So maybe I'll just wait. It's almost not worth the time that I spent propagating it. I wish some of my pallies would wake up. That would be nice. And I wish that one of my um, red crystal port, that one is growing at a turtle speed. I do have this Hoya down here that I think I can sell now. It's rooted and very, very dry. This is the Coriacea green. Um, I do have more Hoyas in here that I think can be potted up and sold as well. More Coriacea some um frick, i always forget the name of this one the fuzzy guy so i'll get those ready i have a dioscoria discolor that is probably also ready i think i'm just gonna sell it like this and just not even take it out i really just want to make some space in here because it's just crazy oh my god i've been wondering what this stick is i thought it was a gloriosum but it's my SP Columbia. Look at how cute it is. It is so silver. I don't think this is the tight vein one. I think it's just the regular, which is kind of fun. I'm gonna keep that one though because my top cutting isn't doing the greatest. Like it hasn't really done anything. I kind of want to keep that just to see. Oh my gosh, I wish I had more to sell in here. I want to make some space. I wish some of my Ripsalis would root faster. These ones that I took these props that I took from my Ripsalis video, they're just starting to root now, but not enough to sell. 
Ace of Spades is not doing anything, no new roots, nothing. I'm thinking of selling this Subsignatum Pap 2. It's pretty small, but I don't need a second one. I have a bigger one, so maybe I do sell this one. My goal, I think, if I can sell like $300 worth of plants, I'd be happy. Ideally, I'd love to do five, but I don't think I have enough for $500 <laughs> worth of plants. I might try and sell some plants locally too, like ones that are too big. I think I wanna sell, oh my God, I'm a hot mess. Um, I think I wanna sell my one of my billies because just I don't really have the space for it, but I don't want <laughs> Lauren to have to ship that. Okay, honestly, I think that's it for the ones in here. Um, I don't really see anyone else that can be sold or whatever and i don't really want to sell stumps i'd rather sell things with a leaf on it so that i can get more for it so let's uh close not close it but that will be all for this one i think we're also going to have to do some rejigging in here i might have to remove one shelf because some of these are just they're just way too squished okay over here i have more props um, this Ripsalis is starting to root, but again, just not enough for me to be able to sell it, unfortunately. Actually, none of these are really rooting as fast as I would like. It's a lot better if I can put it somewhere warm, but I'm going to have to make space in my tent. So, okay, over here, I have this Summer Glory that I can sell. So this is the one I think some of you guys might remember. I had propagated one for my friend. Hers died and I got my original one from her. So I wanted to um, try and replace it, but she's traveling out of the country. She just hasn't been able to like get out here. And so she told me I could just sell it and it's quite large now. So I think this is a perfect shipping size um, and selling size. So hopefully somebody is looking for a summer glory, even though they are kind of popping up in the states or popping up in the stores kind of everywhere now. I was going to combine my mellows together, but I kind of don't know if I want to. And I'm thinking of just selling this mellow, which is my my old one. So we'll do that one because I want to make some space over here. And then I don't really see anyone else here that I can sell. These are the glories that I really like. Honestly, I feel like that might be it, but it's not very much. That is like almost nothing. Let me go run downstairs to the first floor and see if there's anything I can grab. Okay, nothing on the first floor, but I do think I'm gonna sell this guy, which is one of my Thai constellations. Since I have the huge one, I don't really feel the need to keep this one. It's just, I don't know. And plus, kind of want to sell it while it's a good size to ship. I don't really want Lauren to have to ship anything larger than this. It's nice and rooted now, growing really healthy. So we will sell her. And <laughs> I want to sell more. I want to sell, I want to get rid of like two more plants if I can. I kind of have an idea of who but I just don't know if I'm gonna regret it. I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll repot my Florida Beauty because it's getting really tall and I can sell the bottom cuttings that have, that have roots. Okay, let's do that. I feel better about that. So maybe I'll hold off the Gloriosum repot until Saturday, because I think I'm gonna film Saturday, Sunday since I really haven't been on here that will be the focus of today i'm going to get set up here and we're gonna just get these babies ready for their new homes i have a really not strong watered down matcha here i don't even know why i'm forcing myself to drink it it's really nasty and you know what i might have some leftover q a questions from the last week of that i can answer so that you guys aren't just listening to me heavy breathing <laughs> I'm not really loving the questions that were left over from the last Q&A because they're mostly personal questions and not really questions that I want to answer. So um, I'm just going to quickly go onto my Instagram and just see if questions come in as I'm repotting. 
while I'm waiting for these questions to come in, I'm going to answer one question that kind of um, was asked a few times in different ways when I announced the pregnancy. So um, just FYI, I really am going to make a conscious effort to keep all baby pregnancy mom stuff to the vlog channel. But I wanted to answer this one only because it pertains to my plants. I'm gonna try and be as, um, I guess, thorough with this answer as possible so that I don't really have to talk about it again. I actually think I'm just gonna sell it like this. I don't think that I need to take this one out. Obviously, I don't really love the idea of giving away one of my pots, but I'd rather the plant be healthy when they receive it than not. Same with my Thai constellation. I do want to repot this though because I want my pot back. So, I scoot closer. Um, so yeah, the question that I got in was, how do you see yourself shifting in this hobby once the baby comes? And um, my husband and I are going to film, when he's back from visiting his mom, we're gonna film a, not a Q&A together, but sort of just like a sit down chat talking about like how over the last 10 years we've gone back and forth between wanting to have kids and not wanting to have kids um, and just kind of take you through that process, that thought process and maybe why it took us a little bit longer to come to that decision. But obviously he, he can't speak for me when it comes to this hobby and becoming a mom. One of the major reasons I would say in the last five years that I was very, I'm not gonna say anti-child or anti-parenthood or whatever, but one of the big reasons why I was really leaning more towards being child-free was because of this hobby. Um, I love it so much. I love the freedom that I have with the hobby in terms of being able to just go to North Shore whenever I want to and hang out with plant friends or bring home a new plant and have all the time in the world basically to care for it and to fill up my whole space, my whole house with plants and like essentially treat plants like my children. And that really for a long time was kind of my idea of what my life was gonna look like and I was okay with it. But obviously things have changed and um, in making that decision with my husband, I really wanted to stress how important it was for me to be able to still be in this hobby, maybe not as much as I am now because I don't think that's realistic to say that like I can dedicate as much time as I'm dedicating to the plant care, plant collecting, YouTubing, all of that with a baby. But I would still like to be, I don't know, I still want to have my own identity. I want to have something that's just mine. And for me, that's what plants does. Like that's what plants is for me. It just gives me that sense of independence, that sense of freedom. And I really enjoy it. And I do think it's a big part of my happiness and my life. And I really, really don't want to have to give that up fully. And I think something that I'm trying to not let get to me is, and, and I do think that everyone has good intentions when they are giving me advice or just saying things in general. I would hope that it comes from a good place. But I've heard so many like, oh, just you wait, like your life is gonna be all baby, just you wait, you're not gonna have time to do anything, just you wait, um, you know, you're not gonna be sleeping, like things like that, I just really try and do one ear out the other because I fully believe that everybody has their own experience. Hopefully she doesn't mind me using her as an example, but like my sister, she was really into plants, maybe not as much as me, but she certainly was like a collector, she was importing, and she was like just super into it before the kids were a part of the picture. I've seen her kind of slowly, slowly like drop off and now she's just kind of doing the bare minimum and doing what she can, which obviously I don't fault her for. Like the kids are now her main priority. 
but if I can, I really don't want to have to get to a point where I'm picking between motherhood and plant parenthood. Same thing with, I think, people who kind of shrug their dogs off after they have kids, they kind of become an afterthought. I really consciously want to make sure that Pudge doesn't feel any less loved or doesn't feel like he's getting any less attention. And these are all things that have gone on in our head when deciding to have a kid. And so with my plants, when Vince and I had discussed kind of, not for the final time, but one of the last times that we like just agreed that we were going to start trying, you know, he knew from the get-go that plants it was not going to change for me. I did not want to have to sacrifice it completely. I didn't want things to have to change so much. I still wanted to have the time to care for my plants. And so part of that was not giving up this plant room. Obviously, it would have been so much easier to just turn this whole room into a nursery. And trust me, it would make our lives so much easier because right now we have baby, like the nursery, we have pretty much a full nursery in our bedroom, but we've had to just like get rid of so many things. And so half of the bedroom is now the nursery. And then obviously I moved my office into my plant room. And um, now my husband's office is gonna have to be downsized. We're gonna get him a smaller desk, get rid of more things in there. And half of that is gonna turn into a nursery as well. And the reason for that is because baby will be co-sleeping with us for, maybe like the first six months and when i see when i say co-sleeping i mean a bedside bassinet not in the bed with us that's how it's gonna be maybe for yeah six six to maybe six to seven months i'd hope baby is in there and then once he's ready to move into the nursery into the bedroom then he can sleep in his crib so we kind of had to have two separate spaces for both scenarios but for me <laughs> the the plant room was a non-negotiable. I was like, I'm not giving up my plant room. I don't even care if we had twins, if there were multiple, like this plant room was not gonna change. This, I still, I needed this space for me. I didn't wanna have to give it up. I didn't wanna have to get rid of any more plants than I had already gotten rid of. If you guys have been watching over the last few months, like it has just been, week after week pruning things back selling plants getting rid of plants and as good as it has felt to kind of alleviate some of that space for one and just kind of my time i still have felt throughout this whole process that like geez my life is already changing so much or i'm already having to give up so much for this baby and so for me the compromise was sure we can have a baby but not at the expense of me losing losing this hobby too much if that makes any sense i'm just going to be reusing the pond and i'm going to be putting them into some of these old cups that i've saved um over the last few years um and yeah i'm just going to be reusing the pond that it came in i don't really want to switch up the substrate that I'm using for them because I don't want them to go through shock. So we'll just use this. So I guess to answer the question of like how I see myself changing in this hobby or how this hobby will change for me once the baby comes, obviously I can plan for as much as possible. Like I can plan as much as possible and try and forecast what my life is gonna look like. But really, we won't know until Archie's here. We don't know what kind of baby he's gonna be. We don't know, we just don't know. Um, I'm preparing fully for postpartum depression. I'm off my meds. Like, there's just a lot of other things that I know might come into play. I'm preparing for the worst, but I'm still trying to be optimistic. And so I'm hoping that I really don't have to downsize any more than I have to this point. Um, I think maybe I can, like with the exception of my Billetier, I really think the size of my plant collection right now is manageable with having a baby, I think. I know that there are other like YouTubers out there or just plant people in general that have a kid or have kids and are still like fully in this hobby. 
and are like thriving at it once they've found their rhythm and found the balance. So I, something that people have told me too um, when they found out I was pregnant was like, oh my gosh, you're gonna have to give up your plants. You know, there goes your plants. And I just, I don't know, it kind of like irks me a little bit when people say stuff like that. It's like they just kind of assume that once you have a baby, you just have to give everything up and like dedicate your entire life and being to this child. And trust me, I don't undermine or I'm not trying to minimize the importance of that. I mean, that is one reason why we've taken so long to decide whether we wanted kids because we knew the commitment that it was going to be and we knew we wanted to be the best parents that we could be and like give this kid a better life than we both had um that's always the goal is you want to set them up with more than what you had and give them more than what you had and of course that's the goal but i'm not willing to essentially sacrifice my entire rest of my life once this kid is born. And I want to like keep a promise to myself that I'm still gonna like have some sense of identity outside of being Archie's mom. I don't think that that is naive of me. Um, I think that I have to go into it with that outlook or else I am gonna let the intrusive thoughts come in. I am gonna let the pessimistic side of me come in and I want, I want this to work. I want this new chapter of life and motherhood to work with my plants because I just can't, I really can't imagine a life where I'm not doing this. Again, going to plan as much as possible, but my ultimate goal is to try and keep, try and keep it as much the same as it is now. And hopefully I can, but obviously I'm preparing if I can't, but I think I have tapered the collection down enough to the point where I'll still be able to juggle both. So that that is where I am. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I was blabbing on and on and on and on. Okay, so yay, I have questions coming in. Woohoo, okay, okay, okay. I'm not gonna answer, there's a lot of <laughs> pregnancy questions coming in. So I'm gonna save that for my vlog channel. So I'm going to answer anything that is not baby related. With unlimited money and time, what would your, what would be your big dream? I like this question. That is a good question. So, um, unlimited money. I'm gonna talk first about, I guess, the selfish things that I'd want for myself. And that is one, my dream home. I do have kind of like a typical dream home in mind. I really like Eichler homes, homes from, you know, 1960s, mid-century modern sort of style home. I love the one-story houses. I really like, I have no desire to have a two-story home. One story with a lot of square feet is like my dream. To not be in the middle of the city would also be my dream like if i could have land and space and like neighbors that are like not right there but close enough that if there was like some kind of emergency i could get to them easily i'd want goats i would want an attached greenhouse or um some kind of like what word am i thinking of I can't think of the word, but you know, just like some type of attached greenhouse, sunroom, something like that. So that would be my dream in terms of the house. I would also want to pay off all the debt in my family um, so that everybody is stress-free and can just live their life and not have to worry about bills. That would be another dream. Next thing I'm gonna do is pot up, actually, let's pot up this, um, this one, this guy, what is it? What are you? Subsignatum pack. I think I'll put it in this little cup. Um, so yeah, the next thing I would do is pay off all of the debt in my entire family, not just my immediate family, but my extended family too. Cousins, uncles, anyone who has like really been there for me my entire life. Anyone of my family members who have kids right now, I would want to set aside some money for them, whether it be they want to go to college or they want to just start a business after school or travel, whatever, like money for them too. Oh my God, these roots. 
I hate these pots. I don't know why I freaking used it. Pay off everybody's mortgages. It's always been a dream of mine to get one. And I've had this dream since I was little. And it's funny because I don't even think my dad wants this car anymore. But like ever since I was little, he always said that like one day I'm going to own a Corvette. Like I'm just going to own a Corvette. That's my dream car. Yeah, I'd want to buy my dad his dream car. Maybe my mom her dream car. Retire them early and get them that RV that they want. And then beyond sort of taking care of me and my family, um, I think something that I would want to do is do something like humanitarian related, but something that like really makes a difference. And I don't know if this is like really stupid of me, like I just don't know how the world works or something, but it just kind of baffles me that like with all the money that floats around between celebrities, like how come so many issues that have to deal with like homelessness and things like that. Like how come those things aren't being addressed? I'd want to just do something with the money that like makes an actual difference. Whether it be like setting up shelters or women's shelters or I don't know, something to help with refugees or so like something, you know, something humanitarian that's just beyond my little speck of life that will continue on even when I'm gone and when my fam like family members are gone. Um, I'd want to do something along those lines. I mean, truly, if I had unlimited money, I would just... No more homelessness. <laughs> no more people going hungry. Okay, so this guy is in his new pot. I need to get some of these watered. Oh my gosh, they're all so freaking dry. And then I'm going to be potting all of these Hoyas into these little parfait cups and I do think I'm going to do pawn as well. My friend Jane just ordered us some coarse perlite, a massive bag of it and I cannot wait for it to come in because I've been using not coarse perlite and it hasn't been great honestly. I don't mind finer perlite for my soil but for my pawn I really really like using course how am i hungry again i just ate so that answers that question i think <laughs> i mean i'm sure there's like so many other things i'd want to do oh and i'd want to open like some kind of like dog sanctuary like a few of them maybe like around canada and around the states or like internationally too because the dog thing internationally is not great there's a um a woman I follow, she's called the Pug Queen, and she has been bringing in pugs from China uh, that were strays, that were mistreated, that were used in really unethical breeding facilities. Like she rescues those, brings them over to North America, finds homes for them, and she does have like her own little sanctuary. But then there was some kind of like ban that happened, like she couldn't bring the animals from China to the States anymore. So she had to move to Canada, like this whole thing. So I'd want to do maybe something like that too. I'm going to answer this question because I think it would make less, sen less sense to answer it on my vlog, my vlog channel. So somebody asked, what was Alice's reaction to the pregnancy? Although I have no doubt that she was really happy for you both. <laughs> so Alice is one of those um, anti-kid people. And not, not even to the point where she just doesn't want kids for herself, but she really just does not like being in the presence of children. Like she is just very anti-anti-kid. Like she just wants nothing to do with them. And I know a lot of people like, and there was a discussion about this in the baby group that I'm in. It's like, I would never want to be around that kind of person. And those kind of people are evil. Um, but I don't know. I don't really see anything wrong with it. It's like, if you can have the type of person that's just like, I love children, I want to be around children all the time, like, why can't there be the opposite? I just don't think that everyone is meant to procreate. I don't think everybody is born with that natural instinct to care for children or to even know how to be around them or want to be around them. So I've never like faulted her for it. I've never judged her for being anti-kid. Like I get why she's like that because 
there are a lot of children that I've come across that have annoyed me so much where it really just like made my ovaries shrivel. I was just like, why would I ever want this for myself? So I get it. She's known for a long time that we were trying. And when she found out that I was pregnant, it was just, I don't remember what her reaction was. She might have said like, oh no, <laughs> or something. But like, it just kind of makes sense for our friendship. She's not just like, whenever I talk about the baby, she's not like, oh, uh, like, don't talk to me about it. You know, she's been very like sympathetic for my pregnancy journey, I guess, up until this point. Like, she's always like keeping in mind things I can and can't eat and like always making sure I'm like, eating and like I'm okay and even when I came over to her house like she made sure that she had prepared some like ginger tea for me because she knows I'm nauseous. I certainly do not like even though she's one of my best friends she's not gonna be the kind of auntie that I would be like okay it's time to go visit auntie Alice or like let's hang out with auntie Alice like we're not gonna be that kind of we're not gonna have that dynamic I guess overall she is supportive, but she's not like over the moon excited, nor did I ever expect her to be. I think if she had that reaction of like being overly happy, I would know that it's forced and I would know that it's not a real reaction. And um, I don't really, I don't really mind. I don't need, I don't need that support from her specifically because I've always known that if it happened for us, if we got pregnant, she wasn't gonna be that friend that was gonna be like, send me your bump pictures every week and like, how's it going? And like, sending me baby clothes and stuff. And I have plenty of those people in my life, you guys, that trust me, it makes no difference to me if Alice is one of them or not. I'm just glad that like, because she doesn't want kids of her own, that I'll always have a friend that is just like, in the plant world and like I can count on her to like kind of take me away from life at home, motherhood, things like that to just, I guess not distract me, but maybe you guys know what I mean. Um, and please don't talk badly about Alice. Like she, uh, she's such a great friend and um, it's not that she like, you know, she's sad or whatever. I don't think she's sad. But I, I just, I am totally fine with how she reacted. I think she has been supportive to this point. And um, even though she doesn't want to be an auntie, I know she's going to be a great auntie when she does have to be around Archie. <laughs> I'm just going to try and keep it at a minimal for sure. If you could hybridize any two plants, doesn't matter the species, which two would you choose and why? Ooh, that's a really good question. For some reason, my mind immediately goes to something like big and puffy, kind of like the super round Plamanii, the Plamanii with no, um, no not no venation, with no like of white variegation on it, like something like that, really sinister looking, but maybe something with like bright veins no i don't know no 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 that's not what i want oh what if <gasps> what if okay here's fun here's a fun one what if it was like a combination of a monstera just your regular monstera and like a gloriosum so like imagine a monstera plant but with leaves that felt like a gloriosum velvety or whatever that we're you know just des describing velvet leaf plants to be i think that would be crazy because i'm just like such a huge fan of the monstera that like to have one that has a different texture because they're, they're all they all feel the same that would be super cool and now i'm trying to wonder what it would be like in reverse if you had a gloriosum leaf gloriosum leaf that still had the venation like that bright venation, but had like the fenestrations of a monstera. This is getting derailed, but that I don't know why that's my initial thought. Now I feel like I need like AI to design that for me. I wonder if I can mess with it. I've actually never tried because I'm scared to death of AI. Someone said, just wanted to say your videos bring me a lot of joy and warmth and encouragement. 
I am so happy to hear that. Thank you. It's funny and maybe the person um, <laughs> who I had this interaction with might be watching. Someone had commented that like I annoy them a lot, but they can't stop watching. And we had this whole interaction in the comments where we were just like talking about how it's such a phenomenon that people hate watch people. Like my sister does it all the time. There's people that she absolutely cannot stand on YouTube or not on YouTube, on TikTok. She like cannot stand them, but she continues to watch and just like torture herself. So I do think that there's like, that's a thing. I don't think it's just like to this, like this one person. I do think people hate watch people. Personally, I can't because my threshold for annoyance is very low. And so the second you annoy me, I have to block you. I just don't want to see you again. I don't want to see your face again. I don't want to hear you again. Um, and that's just my go-to. I just block you if you annoy me. So anyway, we had this whole conversation about like, yeah, how I, <laughs> he or she can only watch me in like small, I guess spurts, spurts is the word, um, until, you know, they're like, okay, that's enough of, of Charmaine. Like I'm getting very annoyed. And I think I remember one of the reasons was that like, I give off a really like sad, like sad vibe or like depressing vibe or something. I mean, I can kind of see it. I can definitely see it. Cause I'm not like, I'm not super cheery and smiling all the time. And I feel like I have a voice that's pretty monotone. Um, and I don't get really like chipper and cheery and I'm not very animated in my face and my body language like That's just how I am and it's how I am in real life, too And uh, I just can't fake it. I know a lot of people know how to fake it for the camera But I just can't and so I just choose not to to also hear from the other side and hear comments saying that like it does the opposite for them and it like the videos do bring them happiness. It is nice to hear, but I certainly like, I've always known that my personality, the way I am, just all those things are not for everyone. And I don't expect everyone to like me, but I do appreciate the ones that are here. And I guess they get something out of my videos that um, makes it all worth it. All right, so all of these Hoyas are potted. I just have to remember who this is, Hoya, I keep thinking if I stare at it long enough, it'll the, like the words will like pop up at me, but it won't, but it hasn't. I'm just gonna ask Alice and she's gonna be like, for the love, label your damn Hoyas. So the next one is this fry deck. I think I'm gonna leave it as it is. I think maybe I'll top it. Sorry, um, I'm choking up my spit. Kind of gross. Um, there are roots coming out of this stratum. So I'm just going to top it with some pan, but I think for the most part, the rest of these are just ready to go. Like I'm not going to repot, like I said, I'm not going to do the um, Dioscoria. Everything else will just kind of ship the way that it is now. And that'll be that. Now I need to, oh my gosh, I'm kind of dreading doing this Florida Beauty, but I know I have to. It's already reaching the top of my exo and it's getting so burned. I just remembered that I want to wipe down some of these leaves first before I get them packed up. So let's put these and these and these and these and these. Honestly, I'm looking at this lineup and I'm, I'll be lucky if I can even get like $200 for all this stuff, but it's better than nothing. I'm telling you, this Christmas killed me. I already started Christmas shopping at the end of October so I could like space things out, but I'm just, oh, just all like creeps up, you know? I'm sort of glad that we stopped doing Secret Santa on Vince's side of the family. So we used to do a Secret Santa exchange between like his siblings and you know, all of us. We stopped doing that and now we only do gifts for Vince's mom and the kids. So there's four kids on Vince's side and we still do a secret Santa on my side of the family, but I was talking to my sister about it and I was like, dude, how about we just stop? Like, how about we just stop doing secret Santa between us? Cause like 
honestly i really don't need gifts on christmas like me and vince don't even do christmas gifts with each other anymore and for me the best gift is me not having to spend money i don't need to like i would much rather buy gifts for the kids than for i don't know like for my siblings is, does that mean and she agrees she's like dude i would be so down because now that like more kids are coming into the picture it's it's just like adding up and so i'm hoping that this is the last year that my siblings and i and like our significant others do the secret santa exchange our parents are also a part of that exchange but you know my parents always go against the rules and they always get everyone gifts no matter what so it's like if they're gonna do that anyway then we might as well just not do secret santa because it's just like an extra gift that people have to buy but yeah it just man just creeps up okay luckily this summer glory has been like really pretty much pest free since i propagated it like i've never seen any spider mites on it even though when the first leaves started to pop out that was kind of like in the middle of my spider mite thing but i did use beneficial mites on this one so i think that helped a lot but it's looking really good and healthy now i just have to do my um Thai constellation i don't know how much i should ask for this they're selling like pretty big Thai constellations locally for two i think they're two hundred dollars still i'd be happy to get like a hundred for this but i don't even know if i can get that i'll have to see what um lauren has been selling her Thai cons for this one has also been pest free since i have taken it home it's just so dusty like the leaves were so dirty and i don't i don't know why okay so i think honestly that's all the ones that need to be wiped down um my florida beauty is gonna have to be wiped down as well although i did just give that one a shower so maybe not okay let me get i'm gonna get all of these packed up and then i'm going to bring the big girl out okay let me just show you what the florida beauty looks like right now kind of sucks because i just extended the pole but now i'm just realizing actually i didn't extend the pole it's so rooted into the pole i'm pretty sure i could sell most of these nodes all i need is one cutting i don't need like a whole thing of it and i don't even know if i need the top cutting because where the heck am i gonna put it it's getting so big so there's some leaves here that are browning and I really don't know what that's about because I didn't really have this issue before, although it has been getting way less light at the bottom than it used to. <sighs> I wonder if I should take a picture of it before I sell it. It just kind of looks like cockapoo poo right now. <laughs> there's really not much to look at. So, okay, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is disassemble, I'm gonna disassemble the pole so that I can get all the roots out. And this is gonna be so messy and I'm already dreading having to clean up, but we gotta do it. I think first I should empty out the pond, right? I'm like talking to you guys, like you guys can answer me. I think I'll mix it with the pond, the old pond from my SP, my El Guapo, so that I can sterilize it all at the same time. So what I do is, um, I don't know if you can tell, you probably won't be able to tell but there are so many old dead roots in there very fine roots so what i do is i empty it into a bowl i wait until the pond is completely dry and then i put on a movie and i just start picking up the dead roots and that's really the only way i know how to clean up where's my bowl of trash oh it's the only way i know how to clean up the pond before it gets sterilized and reused hopefully i don't hit the mic but i just want to empty out this pond really quick um okay i'm gonna answer another question someone said what is a plant that you've had multiple times and it refuses to thrive in your care one of them that i can think of off the top of my head is the anthurium nigrolaminum gg i talked about this in my recent anthurium video and everyone in my life who has a Gigi has no problem growing it. 
Um, I can't even blame it on a certain specimen because I've owned multiple. I have, I had one from Equigenera. I had one from, I think even Tropicals Plants. I had one from Amanda. Like I've had so many different specimens and they've all just done so crappy in my care. And the one that I have right now is like on the brink of death. So, and I've tried so many different like setups with it. I've tried so many different environmental things with it. Nothing. The roots on this smell so good when they break. Is that weird? I really want a philodendron scented candle. <laughs> Can someone make that please? What's another one that has just refused to do well in my care? Hmm. Oh, the uh, philodendron leader red. I have tried, I think I'm on my third try now with the one I have and it's not, it's not even really going great at this point. It's just kind of whatever. I really like that one though because I, I, it has like such a fun leaf and I don't know, like you guys know how much I love my Billy. And so it's kind of like the Billy's cousin and I really want that one to do well because I enjoy it a lot, but it doesn't really like me. Oh, my hands are wet. I wish I didn't water this one yesterday. Okay, so now that that is off, I'm gonna make such a huge mess. Oh, my Lanta, please. please. Okay. My arm is burning so bad. Now I'm just gonna empty this pole. Hopefully I don't spill everywhere. So yeah, those are the two that I can think of off the top of my head. I feel like those were the ones that I really tried over and over and over again. Oh, the Gigas as well. I mean the Gigas, I had one Gigas that was growing really well for me and it was like sizing up a whole bunch and then I lost it. It just like walked out of my collection and never returned. And since then I've had maybe like two other Gigas that I've killed and now I'm on like my fourth Gigas from Lauren and it's still not really doing that great. <laughs> I mean, it's not doing bad. It's just not really, it's not really doing much. And it's not, it's not sizing up as fast as hers do at the shop, that's for sure. Sorry, it's so loud. I need to figure out which cutting I'm keeping. I don't know, I really don't know if I want to keep the top or the, like a different cutting and start over from a smaller plant. It exploded on me. This pole is so dry. I mean, you can't see anything, but this is what it looks like in here. It's extremely, extremely dry. And I'm trying to salvage the roots so that I can sell them as rooted plants tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that's my answer for that. And then another question I got was, what is my favorite plant at the moment? And I think, ugh, I think it's my, um, my philodendron El Guapo, my tight vein one. That one just like, every day I look at it and I'm just like, I really like you. I really love you a lot. Just makes me happy. I'll always have like this soft spot for um, big pillowy philodendron. I really should be wearing my mask right now because it's so, it's so dusty. And now I'm going to just try and pull out what I can without breaking the roots. I love how easily the tree fern fiber pulls apart from the roots no matter if it's wet or dry. So much better than, than moss. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm, I'm so happy. This thing has been stressing me out for a minute. I thought that I wanted to grow my Florida Beauty like the way I did with my Florida Green, just like really, really tall, but I realized that I don't. I really don't. Okay, that's free. This is free. There's gonna be freaking moths everywhere. I don't care. Saving all these roots. Okay, I did it. Oh my gosh. All right, let me get out of here. I can't breathe. We're untangled and now we do the fun part, which is chop 
I am so excited. I'm so excited. All right, so we've got two bottom leaves here that I think can go as one because they're kind of close together. I'm trying to make sure I give <laughs> each node the right root system. I don't want to chop anything off. I shouldn't. So whoever gets the bottom cutting is going to get like one, two, three extra nodes, which is exciting. Exciting for them. Here is cutting number one. Oh no. I thought this had a root system. Oh no, I'm gonna have to root this. That's fine. Second cutting is down here. This one has plenty of roots. So we're gonna cut here and it has like three, three nodes. And a hefty little root system. This is the leaf. Oh, uh, where do I put you? Hello. I'll just put you here. Okay, and then we've got this leaf here. This one is gonna be a two-noter. I'm gonna cut as close as possible. Okay. Got this guy. Ah. The top is so heavy. Stay. This leaf, a bit of cosmetic damage, but lots of variegation, two nodes, and a good size root system. Cutting three. Um, I'm gonna give this person an extra node up at the top. So we've got this. Two nodes, one leaf, lots of roots as well. This one can also be a two-noter too. I don't know if I should do who has more roots. This one. Like I could propagate one of these nodes. Because like do you see how there's two nodes here? Like I could chop this and just propagate it myself, but here's here's the dilemma. One. I don't want to have to take care of more props because I want to make more space in my tent. Two, I could use the money because I am having a child. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like Florida beauties really aren't going for that much anymore. I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Okay, you know what? I'll keep, I'll keep one of these to propagate myself because I went to Costco um, I think last week with Vince and I looked at the... Uh, diaper prices and I was nearly I was nearly knocked out cold that was not a fun that wasn't a fun memory okay here we've got another so we've got this guy and I have another empty node that I guess I could also propagate lots of roots on this one single node not as much variegation on this one. And the leaf kind of looks like it's getting chlorotic. I might not sell this one. I might keep that one to propagate because I only want to sell ones that like are looking good. I might just keep this one as a two-noter because this leaf isn't that spectacular. But oh my gosh, the the internode space between these two leaves are so little, I almost feel like I should just sell it as two or sell it as one, I mean. Okay, there goes the top cutting. So this one will be, I think, more expensive because it's got three nodes on it. Oh, but there's no, I'll have to root this one. Where the heck am I gonna root all of these, you guys? Where am I gonna put them? Nobody knows. Okay, now the top cutting is basically all unrooted, but I don't want to keep this all to myself. I think I'm going to chop these into two down here. So I'll keep the top cutting for myself, I guess. And then these two, I'm just going to stick in water. I don't want to chop the node. These are really, really tight, that's what she said. 
but I'm gonna callus them really well and then we will stick it all in water. These are really pretty. I wish I could have sold these. Like, look how yummy that is. But we're only selling rooted cuttings. Um, so I'll keep this one for myself. We'll get it re-rooted in water and then um, get it onto a pole eventually, maybe in another repot. But I have one, wait, how many? One, two, three, four. I have five cuttings here that I can sell. I don't know who lost their root system, but that was a big boo-boo. I think this was supposed to go with someone. <laughs> Whoops. Oh my gosh, I'm all sticky now. Okay, I think I'm actually going to, besides the ones that have very clear pond roots, like this one, actually a lot of these have pond roots. So maybe I'll do pond. Okay, I'll do pond, sure, why not? But I'm also thinking I can do a mixture of pond plus this substrate that I used for the, um, the pole. Okay, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna just put them all in the reusable cups again um, and move on to the next question. Do you still want to have the Monstera Sierrana? Heck yes, I do. I do. I do. The question is like, I, and I feel like I've been a broken record, but like, I don't know where I would put it because I have so many Monsteras already and two of them are getting quite large that I feel like something would have to give. I feel like I would either have to give up my large form Monstera or my Thai. Like I don't think I could have all three. I'm gonna write two nodes on this and I'm gonna dip them in a callusing, callusing mix. Um, so yes, I do. Every time I see Benji's, I'm gonna plug in a photo of Benji's and his is like hitting the ceiling. I'm always just like, I need, like, I need one. There's something so like magical about it. It just has this appeal that I can't quite put my finger on, but it's beautiful. Yeah, I would love that plant still. I just don't, I don't really see them for sale all that often. Although I'm not really a part of any, I'm only a part of one Monstera Facebook group. But like even in the, um, groups that I'm in where they're like selling plants, I've only seen the Sierrana come up like very, very little. Like I can maybe like, I've only seen like five sales posts for them. And then like the other ones that I've seen, it's very questionable whether it could be a Sierrana because like the mother plant photos are a little obscure. Like they don't quite look like they'd be it, but Anywho, the ones that I did see for sale, way out of my price range. There is no way in heck, in heckaroni, I could afford it. And I mentioned this in other videos, but I'm not spending more than $100 on a plant anymore. Why do I keep losing my little pokey stick? Do you guys know where it is? We'll just need another one then. Okay, first one down. Hopefully it doesn't pop out of here. How do you treat rust fungus or any fungus on an Ethereum? Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm not the one to ask about this, but I will just tell you what I've done in the past, I guess. So I've used Phyton 33, I think it was Phyton 33 or Phyton 35. <laughs> it was one of those numbers. And um, I used that one preventatively I was using it proactively, not proactively. I was using it defensively, is that the word? Like I was using it on active, like rust fungus cases or any kind of fungus. But then someone said that like phyton is more of one that you use before the fungus actually forms. I didn't really have much luck using that stuff on ones that already had fungus on it, but uh, I did have luck using copper fungicide, so I used the Bonide spray one. Looks kind of scary because it's like an orange color, but on plants that already had some kind of fungus on it, 
it seemed to have stopped it, like not let it spread to the other leaves or other plants. And that's pretty much it. And I guess like the other thing I would do is just to give it a little bit of a drier environment, like not spray in the um, greenhouses when they were in greenhouses, make sure that there was like proper airflow inside of the greenhouse. Like you really just don't want it to get too humid and stale in there because like yeah that's what like caused a lot of the issues i think i think my exos at the time were just way too like way too sealed up was that one node i think so but other than that i don't really have much to contribute unfortunately on the topic of anthurium and um fungal things i guess i find it challenging to pot up single node plants like this especially ones with big leaves because then it just like falls right out of the pot and I don't know how to keep it down so this one is the triple noder I just want to make sure I didn't chop off the node at the bottom because if I did then I'm not gonna sell it as a three node cutting so I've got one node two Three, yeah, there's three nodes on here. Another question that just came in is what is on your philodendron wish list for 2024? I really don't have many philodendron left on my wish list. Like there's really not any that I've seen that I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have it because right now I'm really focused on growing my philodendron larger and more mature. Like I want to have more space and time and energy to take care of those but the two that i can think of on the top of my head one is the sp silver angel it's like the el guapo with the from what i can remember the tight like the tight veined one the leaves seem to be a little bit more narrow the ones that i've seen although i do think i've seen some that have like a more like round leaf but literally like the like the new leaves stay very 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 silver like they're so silver and i think they even have like that really pink sinus oh my gosh it's so pretty for a long time the person who had that mutation uh, i think his name is sergio he had it for a long time and wasn't selling it to anyone but then i've seen them pop up so i do think that he eventually did start selling them to people I just never, I haven't seen any for sale lately, but I would love to have that one if possible. Um, another one that I would love is one that people have sent me, they've tagged me in it on Instagram so many times or like I'm DM'd it like at least once every week. And that's the variegated tortum. Honestly, I think if I got a variegated tortum, I'd probably be okay with it. not having a philodendron florida beauty i don't know i i i kind of lost the love for it not this not all this year but i'd say in the last six months i've kind of just i don't know it hasn't been as exciting to me anymore like it used to be and i much prefer the tortum to this one so um yeah i think if i was able to get a variegated tortum i'd probably say goodbye to the florida beauty completely but we're not there yet who knows if i'll ever own one um but it would be nice uh since that one fell we will use this one and this is a two noter two noter oh my god i can't wait to sweep in here maybe i'll show you the clean the cleanup Ever since I've been saying like, oh, you guys don't like time-lapse, you guys don't like time-lapse. I've had so many people are like, yes, we do. And Alice was like, I love time-lapse. So maybe I'll add more this, this week of, I'll just show you what I, like the process of me cleaning up after filming. But it does get kind of chaotic. I can't really think of any other philodendron on my wish list. I really think that's it. Um, like I said in previous videos, 
I really want my focus of 2024 in terms of new acquisitions. I want it to be with the trailing, the trailing plants, the trailing Ripsalis, trailing Euphorbia, just the weirdo plants. I feel like I'd even be willing to like go as far as to get my own import license so that I could import wherever these Ripsalis are coming from. Cause I've just been, yeah, I've just been wanting to add more to my collection. Not that I'm getting bored of the ones that I have. It's just, I don't know. I just kind of feel like I've been ready to like add more varieties to, to the current collection. Okay, so that is the last of the ones I'm selling. Now, I think I am gonna just do water for all of these. So I will just let them callous because they are dripping. But I do have this guy, which I think I can just pot up now. In what vessel? I guess I'll just do this one. I should callous it though. I think I'm gonna just dip the whole thing in it, or most of it anyway. Hopefully it gives me variegation. That'd be nice. If this one pushes a new leaf, maybe this is the one that I keep and then I just sell the rest of the bigger leaves. It's like kind of sad, but like kind of um, satisfying having chopped that up. That was like two years of trying to get it that size, but it's too big now. And look how much space I have in here. My Aurea is doing so bad, you guys. Even with silica, it is so brown. Also, um, Alice is working with me tomorrow at North Shore. We're both gonna be doing the live. And her Christmas gift finally freaking came in. So tomorrow I will, um, whatchamacall? I will give it to her and show you her reaction, even though she already knows what it is, which kind of sucks, but not really how I imagined it going, but I'm just glad that it got here before Christmas. So I've got it in this little parfait cup. Um, before I seal it up, I do want to water it. Why don't I just have water ready? Why? Flow. It's so funny, people, like when they would leave comments, on my videos, they keep talking about the flobe. How's your flobe doing? Or how do you grow your flobe? And I'm like, what is a flobe? I don't have a flobe. And then I realized that that was like the nickname for Florida Beauty. Duh. Took me a while. Guys, I'm getting old. Okay, so that is gonna be it for prepping all of the plants that are gonna be going into the live sale. Um, I'm gonna get cleaned up here. And then I will see you tomorrow in the car with Alice.
window is so dirty. It smells good. It smells good. Like oh, it smells like it smells like candy. Reading mm, chemicals, but on me. <laughs> I know. Bottom me and candy. Is this heaven? Heaven. Oh, it looks so clean. Dude, last night I was driving home from Poco and I was like, I can't see. <laughs> I was panicking. Wait, I checked the the um wow. the map and it said there was like no cars on the road. It said 20 minutes to North Shore. It's all look at how many episodes. Something there. has to be happening up there. It's like, oh, it's a convoy for um they're all Christmas presents. Just Guys, crazy. there's like 50 prime <laughs> <laughs> trucks on the street. Up. It's and it's all line backed up. Oh no, I can't even turn. Are we in week off right now? Happy week off! Happy week off! Um, I love these car chats because it's like a, a freebie little like 20, 25, 25 minutes. minutes. You have to do very minimal cuts. <laughs> yeah. Except for when I'm cursing and saying things. <laughs> get me canceled <laughs> so um first things first i want you to open your gift oh yay yeah we so get to do a redo this is she, me. hopefully that recorded it actually came oh my god it came two days ago oh Ooh, look at this frosted i know fancy <laughs> i was gonna wrap it but i was like oh it's already wrapped i okay so do you remember when we first met and i was always in jeans yes and now it pains me to be in jeans. We haven't um, worn jeans in a very long time. Well, I wear mom oh. jeans. Oh my God, I love that color. It's so nice. I hope everything fits. I got mediums and everything. I always get mediums. Okay. I don't like anything fitted. That's like a perfect vintage black oh, color. It's so nice. I want to feel it. It, it feels, feels sturdy, but yeah. super soft. It feels thick. Yeah. Yeah. And the inside. Is it it's not. It's not the fleecy. Like, oh, it's like it's this. Like the terry cloth kind of. Oh, oh no, well, this is more, kind of more fleecy. terry than. Yeah. Elwood baby. Finally, I'm an Elwood. An uh, Elwood girl. Elwood. That's a Elwood. mouthful. Elwood girl. Elwood girl. Now I need to summon the courage to wear a crop top. This cropped. Well, you can wear it and at it, home. I will do sit ups for this. <gasps> Oh, I love the frayed. I know, it's like destroyed. Yeah. I wonder how long it's gonna go on you. I feel like you have a <laughs> long cover. Torso. It's gonna be here. <laughs> you could wear like a sports bra under. Yeah, that's true. It's, no, it's not that low. Okay, fine, it is. Yeah, it's gonna be above my belly button. I'll have We're to wear like see some extreme, extreme high waist with this. <laughs> oh, I love this under. color. And thank no. you. Welcome. And please don't forget your pimple patches are in oh, my yeah. plant box. Okay, so anyway. Week of. Week of. We have a big fat question for Alice. We talked about this last night. We talked about you last night. <gasps> we talked about me last yeah. night. Did you say so, good things? So, well, of course. Mm -hmm. When I took questions, um, I was like, I'm doing an impromptu Q&A oh, right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. I got, <laughs> I got questions about you. I actually got questions when I first announced my pregnancy, they're like, oh no, Alice, Alice, what's gonna happen? Oh <laughs> Alice? my gosh. So people are just curious, what? like, so there's a few questions. Yeah. They wanted to know, like, how did Am I- Am I pregnant now? <laughs> pregnant via <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> They wanted to know what your, like, how I told you slash, slash what your initial reaction was. So, I think- It was so anticlimactic. I know. Though. Well, I think if Alice was the type of person that was like super gung-ho about kids and like mm -hmm. excited, I probably would have done something cute for her, like some kind really? of reveal. Did yeah. You, do you even do that for your family? I did. I did a oh. cake. I did a cake. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Or I at least would have gotten your reaction on camera, like did right. it in person. Yeah. But I think it's strange to do that. I thought it was strange to do that, knowing how you feel, because it's like, I feel like you'd have to like fake. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? know. yeah, so, I know, and it's like, it's not culturally very um, accepted for women to like, have no feelings towards kids. Yeah. Um, and I personally don't want kids, like I will never have kids, and I'm very, like me and Karen are like, very aligned on that. Right. So how she told me was like very, it's just like, in our group chat was just like at everyone i'm pregnant <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then i didn't see because i think it was like on a weekend was it on a weekend 
Uh, no, it wasn't. I know it, was, it, was it was on a weekday, but I think it was like a Tuesday. Like you had like a week. I don't know. You were busy yeah. that day. So I didn't see it till like Jean had already reacted to it because Jean is like always, 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 She's always on it. Right there. She's on it. Um. Yeah, and like honestly, I wasn't surprised for some reason. At well, all. because she she's known that I was trying for like a year, so it's not yeah. like I didn't tell her I was trying, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I'm pregnant. Yeah, it's like she knew, and like every month they'd be like, well, and period. we had had a conversation recently before that where you were like, oh, I feel like like my period's late or something. I remember, I think we were at the shop and you said something like that. I was feeling weird. Mm -hmm. I was feeling weird. So it came as no surprise that she was pregnant. Yeah. So I just told them via text and I literally told them the day after I found out. Um, yeah. Because I just wanted to confirm it with a, uh, a clear blue test. I think she took like six tests. I did because I was like, I'm infertile. Like I can't get pregnant. Like it's not. No, I don't think that you're infertile. I think I think you were just like it's gonna be a hard time bearing I mean, a it child. was it was a year. A year is so long to have sex constantly. Like not spontaneous, <laughs> like let's do schedule. it for fun. Yeah. yeah, and like when you are trying, like you do it like three times. Did it's, you did it ever happen where like the timing was like really awkward? Like you just had a fight or you were just like you had just been really mean well, we or he had been really annoying <laughs> actually no because we don't fight yeah really like we don't really get into arguments i guess you're just like you sass him a lot i do it, i it do. doesn't turn into anything but he's like a rubber ball <laughs> just, just boing boing <laughs> just bounces right off of him um do you remember my last vlog that there was a moment where you, i think i feel like you talked to me like vince <laughs> Did you bring my chocolate? <laughs> oh my gosh. That was like the brattiest I've ever I seen. I know, I was craving it so I know. much. I was on the way to pick her up. I was, I was like, like, I, I feel like this chocolate. is how you, you would be demanding yeah. chocolates from this. It is. I, I'm, oh, it it's reached a new level. It's so sad. Thing. It's so sad. I'm usually not like that with Alex. But. <laughs> no, I, I, I replayed that so many times. It was so funny. I um, was like, what if she forgets and I'm not going to get chocolate today? So I know, I, and I would forget something like that. Um, so, did we answer the question? Yeah, so that's so, how I told her. That was her... I don't actually... Honestly, I feel like your initial reaction... I think you said, oh no. No, I didn't. I, I think want to you guys back. were putting reactions in my mouth. You're like, this is what she's going to say. This is what she's going to say. But Maybe we, there were like gifts. <laughs> I, I would be lying to, if I said like... I was as excited as like Lauren or Jing. Like that was everyone, the next question. Yeah, was everyone is like, everyone is a mom now. So I really feel like the odd one out because like I, that's never gonna be me. So I'm not gonna be like, oh my gosh, we're gonna do this and then it's gonna be so cute. Like it's yeah. it's just not in my DNA to like think of those things. I'm happy for her because she wants a kid and like I know how much she loves Millie and just like is obsessed with everything Millie. <laughs> so that's that's it. I, I told her like I'm never gonna like kids. I will have a familial love for your child because he's your child. But like I'm not gonna be the one like begging to hold the baby, that kind of thing. And that's like my honest truth. That's yeah, it. no, yeah. and I fully, <laughs> like, fully understand that. Like, Alice yeah. is not going to be the aunt that I go to. It's like, do you want to want to hang out with us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, and I'm not going to be like, don't ever bring the child. That's, yeah, so but, I think, like, as much as she has a disdain for children, <laughs> it's not like she's ever been like, no, you shouldn't have a kid or, like... Like, you're oh. making a big mistake. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I know that I'm in the minority where I, I actually can't wrap my brain around, like, the want. Mm -hmm. I'm almost to the point where I'm suspicious, like, do people really want to have kids? Because, like, logically, do it doesn't make sense. Themselves? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I know that I'm the minority, so. But I also don't think there's anything wrong with that. I was telling them last night that I don't feel like every person or every woman is meant to procreate mm -hmm. like and i just feel like that's how it should be like if you don't want kids fine yeah. i was reading a discussion in the mom group i'm in 
and there's a whole thread on like people who don't like children and there was so much there was so much hate towards people who like not even just don't want children but just don't like children it's just like i could never trust a person that doesn't like a child but it's like you had to admit like they're kind of annoying like they're they're boring, they can be boring. <laughs> and i just don't get it's kind of the same as like oh yeah like if someone doesn't like dogs like they're a bad person I just don't get it. Yeah. Like I know, and the argument yeah. is like, well, they were a kid at some point, but it's like we didn't ask to be <laughs> brought into this world. That was a choice made by someone else. Yeah, but it's like, like I'm not saying the human race should be wiped out or anything. It's just like I don't, I don't want to be around kids. I don't like kids, mm -hmm. and like I think it's because I, I've had like an, an really annoying kid neighbors recently. Oh. Where I was like extra, like, oh my gosh. Yeah, but you know what? I think a lot of that is the parents too. No, for sure. And then, like, I think the same thing can be said about dogs, like, mm -hmm. that are annoying and stuff. A lot of that has to do with dog parents. Yeah, how they're raised. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but there are kids that I can find amazing. Like, yeah. um, my name? boyfriend's best friend's kids. They're hilarious. They're probably like, they're they're like the perfect kids to me because they're like well behaved but they're so weird and weird yeah I like just this kid ha has a friend his best friend and they found each other because of their mutual love of red pandas and they just like talk about red pandas all day long <laughs> and then he just spews animal facts and so cute yeah he's just got a weird little mind and I just love kids like that kids with factoids factoids but like have you know some discipline that they, they know how to behave yeah and they know that they're kids then they don't yeah. run everything no totally yeah i mean i've met kids that i and i told them this last night i've met kids seeing kids that literally made my ovaries shrivel where i was like <laughs> nope no no <laughs> i am not having kids so you know it's part of it yeah but like, um, i know there are good kids and there are like kids that i would i would not mind being around and i feel like your kid is probably going to be one of those. Um, Please don't be annoying. Don't annoy don't, me. <laughs> unless like your your DNA and Vince's DNA like mutated and made some sort of monster. Yeah, I feel like I'm pretty like I have like a low baseline. I mean, I have like a spicy side to me. There was that was one worry I had about having a girl because I was pretty awful as a baby and as like a toddler. Mm -hmm. But Vince is so mild mannered that I'm like, I hope his DNA just yeah, wipes well, out if, any of mine. Hopefully it's like it's not you on another level and then Vince is just like okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's not gonna happen. I think it's like I it's so. 99% nurture is what I feel. Yeah, no, I believe that too. So, I mean, to answer the question, um, the, the question was, was she excited? I wouldn't say excited. I, no, I would say I she was happy. Happy for, for you. And supportive. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't say she was like jumping for oh joy. Oh my gosh. Oh, I thought he was going to crush. Nor did I expect that. That's what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. I like I know Alice, you know, like I understand yeah. how she is with kids and mm -hmm. how she feels about kids so i didn't have this expectation that just because it was me it was going to be any different yeah my sister could be having a kid and i would have the same <laughs> but also my none of my siblings want kids it's crazy yeah. i think it's just in your dna dude like mm -hmm. i think you're i'm just a poor parent like my mom was so sad about i know it. imagine having like three kids and being oh my god i'm gonna have so many grandbabies i know well they have they have dogs. They dog have dogs, babies, yeah. Dog grand babies. There's and no one on the road. They have nieces and nephews. Yeah. Yeah. But that was actually the one, one like irrefutable reason why my last marriage ended. Because oh. oh yeah, he was baby crazy, and I really thought like maybe I would change my mind, but it was just like as time went on, it was like not gonna happen. So I was like, that was one reason I was like, it's never gonna work out because of this. Like there was no reason for me to be like, well, let's work on this, work on that. I think that's one of those things in a relationship that cannot be fixed a lot of the time. Yeah. When you have that disagreement about children and starting a family, because yeah. it's such a huge part of someone's life, you know? Yeah, and you can't, take that away from someone whether it be that they really 
want kids or really don't, don't want kids. And especially for the mom, I think that's the more important person to be on board, um, arguably. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, and then the Is last... that a downer <laughs> of a quick answer? <laughs> no. Just honest. Um, and then the last question was, how do you think your friendship will change after the baby is born? I think it will change, but like your whole life will change. Yeah. So it's like, I think people go through changes as like personalities and interests and things like that. So it's like small changes constantly, where this is like a huge change suddenly. Yeah. So if you think about all these micro changes that happen with people and like relationships still go on and friendships still go on, it's just like, um, People change around each other or like accept new new schedules new interests new hobbies yeah like that yeah I feel like a bigger change would actually be when I moved to the UK I was that was literally in my brain I was like I think it would be nothing like if one of us moved away yeah because I was saying last night that selfishly I, I kind of like that you're like you don't want kids because you're like that friend I can rely on to be in like Constant. the plant world yeah. and like keep me grounded in plants mm -hmm. and like because I was saying you know I'm scared of losing my identity when I become a mom I don't want that just to become my whole life like mm -hmm. I think that when you become a mom the expectation is that you dedicate every fiber of your being to that child and I think in a way sure yes in terms of nurturing, raising the child, but I also don't think that a mom should like lose who she was before. Yeah. And um, even if like I'm judged for that, for not just completely giving it all 150% to Archie, like that's my choice. And I still really, I don't want to like not have plants as a thing that's mine, you know, like away from being at home away from being a wife like the reason yeah. I really like plants and having my own circle is because it's something that's not mixes yeah because when I moved here it was like all his friends all his family all his circle and I didn't have anything that was mine and so this is like the one thing that I can take ownership of and I I really if I can help it I don't want having a kid to be something that like interrupts that I know it will a little bit but I, I still want to try and keep some sense of identity in this space. Yeah, well, if you think about it, you're probably the most set up to do that because you work from home. Mm -hmm. So you're not like going to the office, daycare, That's all true. that stuff. Yeah. So like, Jean, I'll, her kids are older, right? But like, I'm sure she had, she had time to cultivate a huge collection. Yeah. With yeah. two kids. Exactly. During COVID, yeah. <laughs> while, I, while I'm home, I think overall, um, yeah, like uh, there was one person was like, "Was Ella sad?" <laughs> she, I don't think she was sad. No, I think she was just it. She was kind of like she knew I had, it was coming. I had those thoughts of like, "What's going to change?" Yeah. Um, without ever coming to a conclusion because you can't predict these things. Like, what's going to be different? Just like you can, you can't, you can prepare for a baby. You can prepare for a baby and it's not gonna go the way you think it's gonna yeah. go. Just like I prepared for a puppy and it's not going the way I thought it would go. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, but like that's yeah. my parallel. So I think that I really like as much of a change as this, this is, I don't think that anything would be as big as when she does eventually move. That's just. Yeah, that's, it's, I think that's gonna be the biggest change. Yeah. I mean, especially, I mean, I think it would be less interrupting if, like, you were at least in the same time zone. That's the main thing. But, like... Like, as I'm waking up, like, they're, like, winding up, winding down. No. Wait. Wait, what's the time difference? It's, like, nine between? hours. I mean, that's pretty significant. Yeah. So, like, let's say it's, like, 7 p.m. here. 7, 8 p.m. Yeah. Like, I'm not awake yet. Yeah, you're fully, fully asleep. 
Um, so yeah, anyway, those are the thoughts. I just like, cause I, I feel like I was like speaking for you last night and it, it really you was kind of all the same. You have just spoken for me. Yeah, but I wanted them to hear from you. Um, and we are here. Are you so, filming at the shop? A little bit. I don't really know what we're doing today at the shop. We're gonna do probably well, we some shopping up of stuff and then um, setting up for the live sale. Oh yeah, the live sale. Hopefully we can use the mic. Oh yeah, we can't see. Oh, oh, oh. I'm probably at a bad angle. Yeah. Dum dum. Guys, like I used to be able to back into parking spaces like a boss without the camera and then we got a camera and now I'm like oh, a I know. pussy girl. Now I have a camera. I don't think I could live without it anymore. I know. It's like, it's just not so that easy. hard though. <laughs> it's really not. And your car's tiny. Well, this car's smaller than my last one. Ooh, okay, we made it. So, um, that's not, really fast. I know because there's no one on the road. Everyone's yeah. on vacation. It's amazing. <sighs> that means I'm not going to hit traffic tonight, probably. <sighs> it's either going to be really bad or really good. Yeah. Let's hope for really good. Really good. <laughs> um, so, I don't really know what I'm going to be showing at the shop today, but I'll definitely show you maybe the setup of the live sale and then little bits and pieces of the live sale. Did you bring your camera camera? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, and then also, um, obviously anything for sale in this video, you're not gonna be able to snag because it's today, but she has two more live sales coming up. 28th? And 28th and the third? No. One of those. I'll put this I think schedule. they're all gonna be on Fridays, right? I'll put the schedule in the fifth. description, the fifth. So if you want to tune into another one, I won't be at the one on the 28th because I have a family uh, Christmas thing. Maybe I'll go to the one in January because things will kind of be settled down by then. Yeah. All right, we're going to go in. So okay, we'll see you bye. Enjoy. All right, here's the setup. Plants, plants. This is where we will be sitting, right here. She's gonna be using her new mic today, so fancy. More plants being sold. Look at this little cutie right here. This little guy. And, um, Spiritus back there, more Burly Marks Flame, the Getty Eye, Cormolence. She brought out some of her new seedlings, the Mag, Ralph Lynam for Sherman, some Albos. Alice has some plants today, Florida Beauties. My Florida Beauties, everyone get your Florida Beauty. <laughs> what else? Yeah. So this is Quadrangularis back there, some SP or El Guapos. Yeah, pretty good lineup. I saw. Sorry, I was gonna You're take you guys sorry. along You're gonna this do it process, again. and um, I didn't. But we're all set up now <laughs> and trying to <laughs> figure out the angle. So they don't look like anything right now because if you've ever um, bred Clarinervium, they basically look like nothing for a while. So yeah. they're just tiny. Um, I'm gonna do thirty dollars for these ones. So they're tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, but I'll just quickly show you what the mother plant looks like. So this is the leaf on the mother plant. Do it, Frankie. They're so... Frankie. The rest of the plant isn't looking so fantastic. I just repot it. Um, but this is the mother plant. I love the shape of the leaves. They're so Frankie. pretty. And I selfed this one. So I have three of these Wait ones. Here you go, Andrea. She almost lost um, So this, the code on this one is 50 oh. and it's $30. I'm gonna count this down. Okay, sure. Sorry. Ten. See, this is when I go on the tangent. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
seven, highest bid is 120, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Done. 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 I see 125. Done. Done. Thank you. Oh, I nice. have, we could yeah. pull the ones from the website. Yeah. Is there more people interested so, in KOS? It seems like it. Um, so on it, on it's the offer 125. Yeah. 125. Ooh, that's a nice one. Yeah. Ooh, that's a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. Oh, the other ones are so cute. Also, if you guys watched my story this morning, look at my braid. It's my Vici eye braid. I did it. Thank you. I yeah. was like, you better have your hair down. Hairstylist. I'm that. I know. So I literally she washed, washed her my hair. hair this morning, blow dried it. And was I'm gonna like, cut who it. Who am I? I'm gonna cut it in two weeks. Why is the blood vessel about to pop Okay, we'll in do my both eye? of those. <laughs> Don't say that. It's traumatizing. It, it hurts. 45. Oh, oh no. no. I don't know why I read that as high five. <laughs> I hope it's high five. I keep saying No, high I think five. it is high five. I think it's the Bay Area. I know it's Hannah. <laughs> the Bay Area in me. I just see hype. Hype hive. Oh. Is it? Wait. It's hype hive. Oh, is hype it? Hype hive. That's what. I know it. What I was right. Mean? I should. I should get something. What should Lauren we've been do? calling it? High five. Can you scroll the comments? Back high to, five. I knew it. What did I it? can't unsee it now. Can you <laughs> so sorry. That's oh, how yeah. I read it too. High five. Okay. Well, now we're just always gonna. It's like Jenny. Oh, it's high five. No. Oh, okay. No, it's it high was, five. It is high five. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> was, can you grab the mother plant of this one? Me. That's a solid first leaf, man. Yeah. Oh my god. So gosh. this is the plant that I propped it from. Um, it is. I think it's a red beauty. Damn. Yeah, I it sure one. looks like it. It's to me. um. Yeah. I mean, whatever it is, it's freaking gorgeous. And it's so dark. Do you have one of these? That and I made a little nick in the leaf, and no, I was so sad about it. Twice but... we tried to get it from Amanda. Oh and it yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, another Sherman plant. <laughs> my roll here. Okay, so this is a prop from my summer glory. It's so cute. It's so cute. It's a good size. And honestly, once it gets to this size, like it just goes and it never We've stops. Done one of those. So oh, this maybe? is code yeah. C8. And it is $20. And it has, oh, and if you don't know what a summer glory is, it's a cross between a Macaulay's Finale hybrid and a Philodendron Gloriosum. So the emergent leaves are like really, really pink and precious. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's not like CA goes to Ordinary Plant Girl. Thank you. We're looking for Merry good, Christmas. Christmas. Okay, someone said, what changes would you make to your shop? <gasps> oh, Kayla asked a good one. She did ask a good one. I was talking to Alice about this the other day. Let's what? answer Kayla's first. Okay, Kayla's first. Because okay. I don't changes? know what I would change. <laughs> Any possibility would, would be IAS. I would love year. to go to IAS. The last time we were we were like, everybody from Canada, let's go. I want to go, but I'm going to be freaking lactating. <laughs> I want to go. You have if to bring I can the baby. Afford no. extra like flight out because I'm yeah. planning to travel at least once next year, maybe twice, and that would be like an extra one on top. So if everyone just runs her videos in the background, yeah. maybe she can afford to go to IAS. Yeah. Because that would be fun. I really want to go. I feel like if I don't go next year, I'm never going to go. I don't know why. But I, we've been talking about going for years. I yeah, know. we really have been. That would be cool. And then be able to meet Kayla in person. I know. What was the other question? What would I change about my shop? I wish she could ship worldwide. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, I mean... It's hard because it's really, it's like me. So yeah. like I have, you know, I have Andrea a day a week and I have these ladies a day a week or sometimes twice a week or every other week or whatever, whenever they can come. So Anna does basically the shop stuff on Sunday cause that's the only day we're open. So um, I think maybe what I would change is if I could get find, I find it really hard and this might be a personal thing, <laughs> but I find it hard to like delegate tasks that I'm used to doing. Um, Cause I just feel like there's certain things that it's just like, it's. You just like a done a certain way. Yeah. Does that make me a control freak? No, no. <laughs> I, yeah, I just feel like it's, 
I don't know. Yeah, it's hard for me to delegate certain things. So there's, I feel like I'm limited on what I can like hire someone to do because I like packing the plants and knowing that if something happened or if there's something, I did it. You know what I mean? Like I, it's all because me. And so I think I put a lot of stuff on me and I put so much of my time into this business that it's hard. Like, I don't think it's a business that personally, personally, I don't think it's a business that can scale too, too, too much because I do like to have personal connections with people and yeah, like Kayla said, it's it's my business is my baby. This is kind of where I'm at 90% of the time. And yeah, you want I wanna keep it small-ish to the point where I can still be that person that you talk to if you message. I'm the only one that you're gonna get if you email. I'm the only one you're gonna get if you Instagram or Facebook, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's more personal, I think that way, right? Like I've had people message and be like, oh, hi, NST team. And I'm like, it's me, it's <laughs> just me. Um, so when you message, it's just me. <laughs> yeah. There's some people in the back and I appreciate everybody. You know, I have a good amount of people who have really just become friends, you know, but that also help around the shop. And I hope they have fun while they're here too. <laughs> Top wishlist plant, variegated tortum, circus peanuts, red vein dark phoenix. Oh, no. she's got a lot. I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> nope. I said it before and I'll say it again. I know I said like, oh, I crossed this off my wish list. I try not to, my wish lists are very short. I don't like pine for something because then I feel like, was oh, it if sticky? You, if you actually pine for something, you'd have it like the next day. Oh. Yeah. But then I'll overpay, like I'll, I get, I, yeah. that's my mind. Like yeah, I will yeah. be like, I'll pay whatever for it because I have to have it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I don't want to be like that. I want to, I like it when things just kind of like, it's like faint, become available. And I'm like, oh, I like that one, you know? Oh no, my foot's asleep. Um, but I also want to show you this plant. Which one? Can you grab my favorite right now? I'm obsessed, okay? This is a plant I made like. What is it? It's a mag mag. Or we could get Pluton too. Just bring them all but like, in. oh my god, you guys. Look at it. Delicious. All the other leaves were so ugly, so we chopped them all off. And it needs to be repot because it's literally in this size pot. And I'm going to put it in here. But I don't think you guys realize how big this is. Head for scale. <laughs> And I have a big, scale. I got a big old head. Yummy. So pretty. Next. Oh, this is Alice's Next. favorite. <laughs> We're doing show Next. and tell now. Got a lot of these apples. <laughs> Look at that. And there's new a new leaf. leaf. Oh, this leaf's gotta go. It's yum, yum, yum. It's yum. All, um, well, no. Delicious. You wanna, I'm gonna we can just, cut I'm gonna that leaf, huh? Tuck this one behind, cause it's a hazard. Here you go. No, it's not a hazard. So pretty. This one is this is a Pluton. Gel plant. Yeah. So his plants are legit. So nice. Like that sinus. Fantastic. So Actually, orange. since we're having like a, this one needs a repot really bad too. Holy, look at those roots. Let's see what they look like together. This so is she's fun. Gonna that one <laughs> right. Ooh. Yeah, so those babies that Frankie, you guys saw, the they're going to be a gorgeous. Frankie. Stop. Yeah. We have scissors. I'm gonna do a little trim job while I'm here. <laughs> trim job. Like, it, it, he's just got such great plants. They're honestly so great. And then the one that Char's got in her hands is, do you wanna put him away? Yeah. Char's got a dark Phoenix cross with an Indo port. Look at this emergent leaf, you guys. Like, that with is the ears sinister. The, yeah. Okay, this is a really cool one. It's little. So it's not as impressive. I'll show it to you after I show this one because this one is, I'm loving it. So this is a Crystal Mag Lux Holy smoke that I made and look how pretty this is. Is that not the most beautiful thing you ever saw? It's so big, so Fantastic. pretty. My goodness. It's getting really big and I haven't checked, I repot it. Not that long we ago. need to find guys we need big orchid pots where do people get their large orchid pots like 14 inches 16 inches i know like this is a problem merry christmas to you guys um and then january maybe both of them we'll see okay merry bye, christmas. bye guys. thank you there we go
go. Okay, that's better. So the live just ended. We're gonna clean up really quick. I'm gonna go home. I don't think I'm gonna do anything for a week of today after this on account of I am tired. Um, but yeah, that's it. Ignore any background noise. Vince is taking Pudge out for his potty. So it is Saturday. Today is Saturday. It's around 1 p.m. Um, I just filmed for like an hour and a half with Vince for the vlog channel. So my voice already might be cutting in and out, unfortunately. But we have a little bit to do today for I think what will be the last day of week of Again, I think this month is gonna be a little bit shorter. It's probably not gonna hit the three hour mark, but yeah, but still still a few things to do today. Obviously, I would have shown you that um, I ended up going to another thrift store the same day that I went thrifting, when was that? Thursday? And I did find the pot size that I needed. So this is literally the exact size that I had in mind in terms of the width of it and the depth. Um, I was like kind of floored that I found exactly what I needed. So here's what it's in right now. It's in a pot that's much wider, but a bit shorter. So I think I'm, I'm, I just feel better about going deeper rather than going wider. And I am gonna stick with pond because I do like growing my alocasia in pond with no drainage, but I want to clean up the roots because I know that there are dead roots in here. I can see it already, but I can see some new ones. So I just, I just kind of want to see. Oh my god, of course there's a new leaf coming out. This thing doesn't stop. Hopefully we have some corms. I don't feel like there's going to be as many as I harvested last time. I don't think, but if I can get a few, that would be nice. already seeing a bunch of dead roots like you can see all of those brown mushy ones and i can see a bunch in here that have fallen off so the root system isn't massive but i do still think that pot size is going to be perfect and i don't want to go too small so i'm going to just start cleaning up the roots and maybe Finding some corms if I can. 
I can see some little ones, but I don't know if they're gonna be big enough to harvest. Oh, you know what? I have stem rot. Look at that. It's all, this is, this is stem. And that's the corm it grew, grew from. That's surprising. I definitely didn't suspect stem rot. So I think I'm gonna chop off a little bit at the bottom. Ooh, we got one big fat juicy corm here. Look at that little macadamia nut. And then there's some smaller ones that they just feel a little too small to harvest. I'm not feeling super confident about removing them from its mother, but at the same time, if I don't, it's gonna grow at the bottom of the substrate, which is not great. You know, I've rarely had an issue with stem rot with an alocasia before, so that's kind of surprising. But again, I really don't think the light here is strong enough. Um, my goal is to eventually find a way to get more light from the front. Um, I just don't know how without having a light fixture in the center of my floor. I really don't want that because space is already kind of limited in here as it is. But, um, some, I mean, something's got to happen because I can't keep dealing with all this browning on leaves and rotting because of not enough light. Alocasia roots scare the daylights out of me. I will never not be scared of repotting an alocasia. It's always like a hit or miss. So I'm going to just harvest these corms, even though I just, I, I kind of feel like they're too small but they're not going to be able to travel all the way up. Like, look at that, that's way too tiny. They're not going to be able to travel all the way up, especially in pond. It's way too heavy. I've had um, alocasia sprout inside of the soil and then, or inside of the vessel, and then they eventually die because it just gets suffocated. But I do want to chop this stem back a little bit because I can feel a little bit of mush, but it kind of looks like it's starting to heal itself. But I want to at least get it cleaned and then get some callusing hormone on it. Anyway, um, outcome of yesterday's purge. It was really good. I would say that it was a successful purge. Thank you to anyone who bought any of my plants yesterday. Basically everything that I brought sold, which is really cool. Like I said, Christmas killed me and it's um, nice to be able to kind of like replenish some of that money, especially after I bought that new shelf and stuff. Just a lot of expenses this month. But luckily <laughs> the worst is over and I can get back to saving and spending more frugally. But yeah, thank you to everyone who bought plants for me. I hope you guys enjoy it. I am now prepping for the sale that's coming up in January. I won't be able to attend or sell any plants in the next live sale, which is gonna be on the 28th and it would have already passed by the time this video goes up. But I will be hopefully in attendance um, at the next one if, if I have the car, because Vince might go to Edmonton at that time, meaning I'll be stuck at home. Um, but yeah, I do have some other plants that I'm hopefully, like that are hopefully gonna be done growing and I can bring. But if not, it's also not the end of the world. So here is the current root system. It's not great. It's not humongous, but I also wouldn't consider this a bad root system. But like I said, I am going to chop the bottom off and get it calloused and I'm going to wait to water this for maybe about two hours. I'll let things harden up down there. That's what she said. All right, that is how I know I've chopped enough because all I see is healthy tissue. That is beautiful. But I do want to at least get this mixture on here. I'm really surprised that there was stem rot. I never would have suspected it, not even for a second. I knew that I had some old, some old roots, but really didn't think the stem was rotting at all. Okay, so now that that's done, 
I'm gonna do a layer of Lekka down here. I feel like all we did this week was repot stuff. But really, there's not much else I wanted to do. Um, I was kind of thinking of maybe redoing my tent. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, I am gonna be inoculating this with TPS billions. I would have loved to add a little bit more coarse, coarse perlite to this mix, but I don't have any. Um, I'm still waiting on the one that I ordered to come in, but that's okay. There's a little bit of in. There's a little bit in here, and there's also orchiata. And that is basically as far as I want to go. I don't want it to be too heavy on the roots. And now she's done. I'm feeling a lot better about this. Actually, it's so much lighter than the vessel it was in before. Like, I did not use as much pond, nearly as much pond as I did with the original one. I really think that this was just way too heavy. The perlite that I mixed into here is very, very fine. Like, there's not a ton of coarse perlite. Um, I know a lot of people don't mix in perlite with their pond but I just, I have not had a good experience not adding perlite. Um, things have always rotted. So yeah, I'm feeling a bit better about this mixture than the one it was in before. And like I said, I'm just gonna wait a couple hours for things to callous up before I get some water in there. Um, the next one that I wanna do is my Gloriosum. And I'm not really looking forward to this, I'm not gonna lie. Potting crawlers is kind of stressful. <laughs> Not kind of stressful, it is stressful. And I don't even know if this is gonna be the right pot size, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna try and force it. This is the other target planter that I have. It's like way smaller than the one that I potted my El Guapo in, way smaller. But I think, I don't know if the root system on my Gloriosum is massive. Here is what the Gloriosum is in right now. It's in basically the same pot size that my fry deck was in. Um, maybe a little bit smaller, but Gloriosum isn't doing too bad. It just pushed out this leaf. It is a lot smaller than the one that came before it because it's getting a lot less light where it is in the plant room now. And it also has run out of space. So I think you can see it's literally pressed up right against the edge of the pot. So it's just time to get it out of here. And I just I don't like potting crawlers. I really don't. And I'm still going to stick with soil for this one. I'm not going to try and do any kind of transition. I kind of just want to keep things the way they were. I think this is mostly hardened off now, so it's all right. Don't hit the mic. Oh my gosh, there is so much EFN on this plant. There's so much EFN on this plant. Oh, you know what? I'm just so happy to not see spider mites. I'm really like, I'll take anything over spider mites at this point. One thing about using Lekka as a uh, reservoir down at the bottom is that th when things get root bound, it's really, really difficult sometimes to pull it back up because the Lekka comes out as a solid mass. So just keep that in mind. But otherwise, I feel like this plant has been really, really happy in no drainage and in soil. Okay root system it's looking really good very happy with it I do feel the need to chop off a little bit of the tail end just to um, free up some space in the vessel but at the same time a longer rhizome like really helps stabilize the plant especially with bigger leaves like this 
Uh, I do think I can afford, like, there. I feel like there's enough of a root system at the front to chop the back a bit. I do have one pot that's like double the size of the one I'm thinking of, but I don't know if it's gonna fit up there. It's like pretty big. But now that I'm looking at this root system, I think I'm gonna have to go bigger. Unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna fit in that tiny little, that tiny little thing but I'm trying to just separate some of the root system in the back of this rhizome so that I can chop it off. I really, oh my gosh, there's soil everywhere. Didn't really want to have to propagate another gloriosum, but this one is a really cute one, so I don't, I don't really want to throw it away. Oh my gosh, she is heavy. Okay, let's switch you this way. Maybe I can lean it on my chair. So I've got some roots back here. I think I can afford to to separate this entire back portion. I just wanna see exactly how much roots I would be losing up at the front. This is the tail end root system and this is the front. So I'd be severing off like half of it or maybe more than half. Oh gosh, no, there's more here. Back, front. Oh no. What do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Because I want to chop it right here because then I'd save about five inches or something in the pot, in the vessel. And then it can live in there for a lot longer, but at what cost, you know? I do feel like this is like the perfect root size for the size of the plant. So ultimately, I am not going to chop. I think we're gonna leave it. Not like super happy about it, but it just feels like the right thing to do. And now I'm getting EFN all over my chair. Oh no. I showed this one to you guys, I think when I was repotting my El Guapo, but I, I think this is gonna be a better size or a more um, appropriate size for the size of this root system. What is that? I added about an inch of moss. Moss? Like a, I don't know what my soil is. This is not gonna be enough soil for this. I didn't realize that I was so low on soil. I thought I had more. All right, I'm gonna add some to this top layer of Leka. Oh gosh, Sherman, we cannot afford to spill any soil right now. Okay. I'm gonna start at one end of the pot. I try and spread out this root system because it's quite large. Why does that feel like it is about to fall off? I'm gonna inoculate for huge. I'm sorry if this um, week of wasn't really much at all, but um, yeah, just kind of trying to I was trying to take it a little bit more easy this month just because I didn't skip any I didn't skip any uploads this month. I've also been trying to be more active on my second vlog channel. So it's just been a lot of filming and a lot of editing and working. And I knew going into it that there was no way I think I don't think this is gonna be a three hour week of it really doesn't feel like I have filmed enough to have put together a three hour video, but anywho, yeah, big, big repotting week. And I am feeling really relieved that a lot of the big ones that were stressing me out are now done and I don't have to worry about them for a while. We still have to figure out what's gonna happen with my Thai constellation. In a perfect world, I could find a clear orchid pot that is like a 14 inch diameter, which I know is huge, but the tie is huge. But really the, the biggest size that I can find in an orchid pot is eight inches. I think it's an eight inch. I think that's the largest size, which is not <laughs> no, nothing compared to the root size of my tie. So I'm still gonna find out um, I'm still gonna try and find a substitute pot for that, like a DIY pot, maybe like a clear trash bin. 
whoa, why are you doing that? First things first, we need to figure out this situation with the stem. So I'm gonna use some of my Hugo's Amazing Tape. Hopefully this sticks because my hands are dirty. And if you get these things dusty at all, they don't stick. And I really, I'm having a feeling that this one isn't gonna stick because of how much dust is on it from my hands. Maybe I can wipe it on my pants. Oh my gosh, it's not gonna stick. I might have to just use Velcro in the meantime. So where do I put those rocks, guys? Two rocks came out of this thing. Where did I put it? Oh, here's one. Cause he needs some support. It's fallen, it's fallen over. That just popped off. This is a hot mess. Okay, let's let that fall for a second. I need reinforcements. Let's first try and get this new leaf that is like flopped over. I don't know what the hell happened. Like the petiole isn't bent, but it kind of looks like it's just getting really loose. So that's not a great sign. So I'm just gonna use some Velcro strips to support it to this leaf. Okay, good, good. I have one big rock here. I actually need to go collect more rocks because this is pretty much my last really big rock. And I like using these for big crawlers like this, but I really could have used like a third or fourth big rock. Another uh, way that I like to support new crawlers or crawlers in a new pot is by using like the stick method. Okay, stay, stay. Little bamboo stick. Stick it at the very edge of the pot as far back as you can. And I'm gonna try and wriggle it between the layers of LECA even so that it's really secure. I think I can feel the bottom of the pot now. I'm gonna wedge this little rock between the stick and the rhizome so that the stick doesn't move at all. And then I'm gonna secure one of the petioles to the stick. Um, this is too short. It has taken one bamboo stake and four rocks <laughs> to secure this crawler in here as it gets established, but once those roots really get its bearings in the new soil, it eventually supports itself, obviously, as you saw in the last pot, because I would have done something similar when I repotted it into that pot to make sure it was like holding itself up. <sighs> oh my gosh, the fungus gnats. All right, I'm definitely glad that I opted for a larger pot, but she's done. To be honest, I might chop this leaf off because I've been keeping this as like a one to two leaf plant uh, just for the sake of fitting it in a space and like this one's kind of facing a totally different way. But I don't know, I guess we'll leave it for now. Let her get settled. I'll probably water this in about an hour. And yeah, feeling overall pretty good about it. Ooh, hopefully she likes her new pants. My little spiral plant has been doing really bad and I, I think it's because it had spider mites and it like never really recovered after that. Um, it's been like yellowing and dropping at like a crazy pace, whereas before it was like so nice and green. I'm, I'm honestly on the verge of just chucking this plant because it is very thirsty. It's gotten really large and I've kind of run out of places to put it. And not just that, like I can't for some reason get rid of the spider mites on this thing. And whenever I spray it with any kind of spray, whether it be my alcohol spray or like some kind of pesticide, it always reacts so badly to it. Like I just get a lot of yellowing on it. Like that looks really sickly, I don't like this. <sighs> but I really like this plant, like I really like it and I wanted it to work out so bad. I'm almost wondering if I should just chop it back, like chop everything off and like start over again. Cause I don't know, I like having little funky plants like this in my house, 
but it's just like looking so sad. Like it was like at its peak prettiness maybe at the end of the summer and she was just looking so nice and full and lush and it was like really bushy and now she's just so floppy and yucky looking and I can see spider mites on it. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay, I don't know what's gonna happen with that thing, you guys. There's a chance I might chop it back down or just get rid of it completely because I don't have time to be dealing with these freaking problem plants anymore. I want smooth sailing in 2024. <laughs> That's what I want. I don't want to be stressed out by any plants. Anyway, you guys, um, I think that's going to wrap it for this week of. I was going to maybe go into my tent, redo the shelving, but I just, I, yeah. It feels good to end it here. So hopefully I was able to put something or whip up something for you guys this month. I hope everyone had a very, very Merry Christmas. Happy 2024. I almost said 2025 again. Happy 2024. Uh, it's been a wild year, but it's also been a great one. So thank you to everybody who has been here with me all year um, supporting me. Thank you to everybody who's new here that has subscribed. I appreciate you guys all so much. Um, 2024 should be <laughs> should be an interesting year. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching another week of. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you next year.